Welcome back everyone to another video. In today's video, I want to show you how you can connect scenes and set the position of the player accordingly to which entrance or exit he went. So here in the example, you can see I entered the sign with the brewery. There's a brewery sign. And once I enter the next scene, it will load me at the brewery sign. But if I go now, let's say to an other sign, let's say copy here. No, we're not going to go to copy here. But to the beer glass there, then I'm also enter here the beer glass scene. And I want to show you shortly today how you can easily set this up with a couple of simple actions and coordinates. So let's get right into it. So here's the basic scene, or let's say the level outside. It's from Emily's Adventure, which you can play on HIO. And instead of having a one exit, which would just load the next level and set a starting position, I added three exits of this level, of the end, or exits or entrances, however you would like to call it, because I will make it in such a way that you can move between the outside level and the inside level. So here there are three exits. They don't do anything at the moment. They're just set up, uh, let's say, in a, in a normal way. There is no box colliders or anything. So let's we will set that up together. And if we go into level inside and then we go to Emily, we focus. Then here I have corresponding three entrances and I also put a logo so we can find ourselves back easily later. Um, and by that way, once I enter outside in entrance one, I will come here. If I enter in entrance three, I will come out here. So let's go to the outside world and let's focus again on Emily. So now we are focused on Emily. And the first thing what I did was I watched one of Bracky's uh, tutorials, a very simple one. And I also recommend you to do this one. Uh, what I did on the change level, I set up an animator and I added a second canvas. And this canvas here, um, or let's say the scene, has just one image. And if we focus on it and we allow it, what I did was I stretch one image. So I just add a normal image and I scratch it. When I press here and then you hold control, I actually Alt and you press this button here, then it will always fill up the whole canvas. Yeah. This I made them black and what I did was going to change level. I added animations of the fade in and the fade out, which was very simple. I just went on this picture and I, for the fade in, so at the start of the, when you enter the level, it will just fade in. And the fade in is a simple animation where I just set the transparency from one to zero. And then I uh, disable, let's say this, image at the end. What I also did on the fade in is then turn off the loop time so it won't loop and the same for the fade out. And in the animator what I added was just here this transition with no exit time and all these transition duration fixed duration is all gone. It's all zero and the trigger condition trigger is change scene which is a trigger. Yeah? So that's the only thing I set up. Now let me just uh, turn this off. Uh, the moment I hit play now, it will then uh, fade in. Yeah. In Playmaker, there's also the option to fade in camera, fade camera, uh, but I don't like it because if you change the state, it will reset. And then on the scene change, it will fade it out, but then it will show it shortly again before it goes to the next level. That's why I implemented this very shortly. It's very easy. Um, so please check that out. Uh, so on the change level, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a empty and let's call this one um, then um, yeah, entrance one and let's just uh, check the transform um, and let's put it here on top. And what we're going to do is we add a box collider, which is then a trigger and let's just set it somewhere here. So once you're almost into the door, then I want to trigger. And let's set up the Playmaker FSM finite state machine right here on this one. And the first state is of course the trigger state. And this is our famous trigger to the event. 
and Emily is now currently the player. So let's do the player and then we send the event of finished. So there we go, finished, very good. Then I want to first of all fade the screen. So what I'm gonna do is set animator trigger. And if you don't wanna set up this canvas with scene feed, then perhaps just use the fade camera, fade camera out or in, yeah. Um, that way you just get a black screen and then then change it in the next state. So, but I'm gonna do set animated trigger, gonna specify the game object there, change level and the trigger is of course, change scene. So let me just go here, second. Should have it actually automatically, but let's just type it here, change scene. Change level doesn't have an animator. Yes, it has to change level, which is fine. And what we also want to do is wait one because this animation takes one second. You can also make this shorter if you like, but uh, I'm just going to wait one. So let me put this as, let's say, fade camera, fade camera or screen. Because I'm not fading the camera, I'm just fading the, the screen at this point. And in this state, instead of loading the scene right away, what the first I want to do is the set int value. Yeah, because I'm gonna use a global value and I'm gonna use a global. And I already set this up, uh, scene player position, but let's just make a, a new global and let's call it scene or yeah, scene position. Can call it whatever you like and let's call and let's set this to one and let's just one set pause load level i'm going to set it to one and then i'm going to load scene and scene by name i'm going to load the scene level inside there you go so that's then for, let's say, this entrance. And what I can do now is just duplicate this one with Ctrl D. And I'm just gonna drag this exit here. I'm gonna duplicate it again. And I'm gonna put this exit here. And let's call this also then our entrance. I mean, it's an entrance to a cave. So let's just also call it like that. Um, and of course, what I wanna change here Everything remains the same, but this one, the, the second exit, I'm just going to put the global value of two. And for the third exit, I'm going to, let's say, put the global value of three. So that's good. So we have like one, two, three exits. And I put some pictures accordingly, the brewery, called beer here, or let's say the glass of beer, which are inside the cave, which is great. And this, this is already set up, let's say, for changing the scene. Now, of course, if you want to use player prefs as well, you can also set this here, you know, to save your level. But I just want to keep it basic in this one. I'm going to add then one more empty here. And of course, let's reset. Oops. Reset the transform. And let's call this the position manager. And I'm going to add a FSM here. We can call this FSM, of course, a player position manager or anything you like. Yeah. Perhaps I'm uh, mistyped it a little bit. There we go. And what we want to do is check position. It's the first thing. And we're just going to do this by an int switch. So it's quite simple. I'm going to get the global. And there's the scene position, which I made earlier. And the scene position is either set to one, um, two or three. But of course, if I enter this level, I will be here because this is the basic, let's say, level structure or the start of the game. At the moment, I'm starting to move between scenes. Then I will always, let's say, get this global. And I will have three switches. And I will compare, let's say, what happens when one, two and three. And for each one happens event and that's let's say um, go entrance 
one. Uh, and then you will then go and run two. Then you will then go and run three. And by just clicking these, they will be added. And now let's do one and then let's say set position. And what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to just set position because at the beginning of loading the scene anyway, you will have a fade. So you won't, because it happens so fast, you won't see this happening. And we're going to specify the object. This is then the player. Um, why is there an error here? Yeah, okay, I still need to make uh, the other uh, positions. And of course you can make here a factor, but let's just keep it very simple. I'm just going to set the X and the Y. What I did, I was, I just made this empty object here, the player, and I'm just going to put it on the position where I want, let's say the character to respawn. And uh, let's go on the position and let's lock it. Also important. And then let's put here the position and uh, because it's at the end of the level, the X value is quite high, but let's put it then here minus. Okay, great. I mean, that's then the first position. I'm just going to duplicate this one because in case of when I come out of the exit two, number two, I want to go here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this position up here. So I got here these, and I know this is kind of manual and perhaps there are better methods, but let's just keep it simple. And I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to, I duplicate the state again. And I only, of course, want to do this once. Uh, no messing around with the every frame or late update. So let's say the position is just this. Position there. Position for number three is then here. 260 and 735. There we go. And that's then already um, the setup here for inside. So now if I walk in here, I will load the scene inside. But of course, at this point, if I load the scene, nothing much will happen besides loading the next scene and putting, let's say, the character in the middle of this next scene. So it doesn't know where I am, right? So let's just copy then um, these entrances I want to copy and the position manager, because I can just duplicate this, all this stuff, and might as well get the position. And then we go in the level inside, let's save the scene. Oops, let me copy this once more. Position manager, position, copy. Go to level inside, oh, that was already a position. Let me just paste all this here. And yeah, this is still the whole level. I'm sorry about that. I uh, didn't want you to see that. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag in these three entrances to the change level. And the change level already has here the canvas. And then entrance one, I'm also going to just put here. Entrance two, here. Entrance three, there. So I don't need this position. I already have a position. And what I'm going to do here with the position manager, oh, and here, of course, the oops yeah of course i have to be careful that i don't put the, the wrong one and here of course i have to put the change level once again and same for this one so i actually should have just copied the whole thing together huh? so make it only once and then copy it to the other levels so lesson learned and you don't have to oops have to uh, drag it in like me because this is always a little bit tedious work. Uh, of course, it happens often. And I still have several errors because here, of course, the position of Emily also needs to be fixed again in each one. And let's just drag that in, but it's done within seconds. And let's, let's get the position. Of course, I don't want the position inside the trigger because then it will put me outside again. I'm just going to put it in front of it again. So that's the only thing you have to be careful. Of course, people always have this in game. Sometimes they run into the wrong direction because they think they have to run to the right and then they leave again the scene. Happens, but that's just the way it is. If you want to prevent it, you can also put like a barrier up there. But um, let's go to position manager. I'm going to lock this one in 
Um, so number one has to correspond with this one. Let's get here the position. It's 2.71 and 0 0.17. Good. It's going to move the position up. This was the number two with the cold beer here. It's going to put it here in the front. Make sure to get the position here. And a lot of label work and no interesting coding. Um, but I want to also have it simple for you all. And this is then the number three. And let's also get the positions then again there and here. So it's up there. Um, and if we now go, let's say, to the outside level once more, I'm just going to hit play. So if I now go into this entrance, I should also come at the corresponding brewery. So the fade works very nicely. I fade in and I'm here. Even though my position was here, you can see seamlessly I'm now at the brewery. So if I go up now and I want to exit to two outside. Of course, nothing happens. This is, of course, typical that this happens in, in, <laughs> in such a... Um, of course, I have to load the level outside. And that was, of course, not very smart of myself, I must admit. Um, that was not smart. So this one as well, of course. Load level outside. And this one as well. So just copy pasting, it doesn't always work. So let's go at it again, this time from the inside out. And we will start now at the base position here because no global value is set. And let's uh, just go to the entrance two this time. And voila, we're outside in front of entrance two. The entrances here are very close near to each other. Of course, in your levels, they will be further out of each other and also connecting perhaps to other scenes, which is even more important. But knowing that there, you can, of course, also go to other scenes, but you won't need more additional numbers. What you just need to make sure of is that within one scene, you need to make sure how many entrances or exits you have. Yeah. So you can have then, of course, um, five entrances. And just, of course, you need to know from the outside which scene connects to which entrance. So now I had in one scene different entrances. And you will also have, of course, in every Metroidvania game, you will have some central hub where there's then doors to, let's say, different levels. So as, as you can see here, you could make it very easily to get then a level besides here and a level here or a level here. So this can also be a cool, um, uh, let's say, a level select system where you come in with the player and you have entry access then to the different doors depending um, on what you have completed or not. So that's it for today. I hope this is helpful for you. I will definitely try to use this system in one of my next games or if I work further on Emily's Adventure uh, and get this kind of Metroidvania view where yeah, you have to kind of find your way to different levels and go to different scenes and perhaps different ways and not just one linear way. Good. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.